Good morning. Good morning. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I hope you're having a wonderful summer so far. And this just gorgeous, lovely, uh, cool breeze summer that we've had. Isn't it just terrific? Absolutely terrific. Now, remind yourself that we were griping and complaining about it being so cold and crummy weather, so now we get to complain about how crazy hot and humid it is. But this is a wonderful day that God has blessed us with because we're able to gather together as God's people and come together to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. If you look at the back of your bulletin, just want to quickly touch upon that this coming Wednesday, uh, we're going to have our Sparkle campaign for the church pews, uh, it has been getting a little irritating that when we ask you to stand and the back of your shirt sticks to the pew uh, from all the spraying we've done over the last year and a half. And so if you're able to be here Wednesday morning at 8, more hands that we have to scrub down, clean down the pews, uh, the quicker that job will get done. And next Sunday, you won't be so sticky. So we look forward to that. Free concert this afternoon uh, for Kelly Thompson's birthday and Leah, Wes, and Daniel are going to be playing for that. It's 3 o'clock at the Nicewanger Performing Arts Center. Our participation in Walk for Life, uh, that is going to be coming up this fall. And if you would like to support and help out and participate in any way, uh, we invite you to please do so. Then on the inside cover of your bulletin is about the 127 garage sale. Now, this is a way for us to raise funds uh, for our Kids Against Hunger Rice Kit Project that we have been doing for a number of years. That'll be this fall, in which we uh, make rice kits, uh, meals for kids and families here in the county, as well as around this great country of ours and throughout the world. So just want you to keep that in mind also. Uh, if you're guests with us today, welcome, and hope we can see you again very soon. Um, I know we are missing quite a number of people uh, mostly from the, our Lincoln View contingent. For some reason, they're just not here today. I'm trying to figure out why. Um, but anyhow, good luck uh, for those of you who are watching online as well. Uh, good luck to our boys at state. I believe that's 4 o'clock today in Akron for the state championship. So I hope they do very well. What a year they've had. And so we celebrate with them on that indeed. So I invite you to please uh, turn to the front cover of your bulletin. For our call to worship on this Sabbath day, please stand. The church is the place where the broken gather. The church is the place where sinners are welcome. The church is the place where the forgotten gather. Let us worship God who looks at us with the eyes of love. Hymn 712, verses 1 and 3, Lord whose love in humble service.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. For God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Grant us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. On behalf of the Learning Committee, I'd like to say thank you. Uh, Recently in my daily devotions, I read John 13, 34, and Romans chapter 12. And this week, these verses were brought to light here at St. Mark's. I'd love to be able to say thank you to everyone, but there's not time. And in an attempt to keep it brief, I'd like to thank the volunteers who worked a lot of hours praying, preparing, and working with the children this week. Um, If all the volunteers would please stand and if we could give them a round of applause. I'd also like to thank the parents who took the time to make sure that their children were at VBS each day. I know mornings are a little hectic and at times uh, a little trying, so thank you, parents. And I'd also be remiss if I not not say thank you to the children who came with their smiles ready for the adventures of the day that they would have at Mystery Island. And last, I would like to thank the prayer warriors. Their prayer for the success and safety was greatly appreciated. And I know that I said that was my last thank you, but I'm very long-winded. So my final thank you is to all of you at St. Mark's for hosting the VBS. It does make a difference in the lives of a lot of people. And this week, each one of you showed Christ's love and became the hands and the feet of Christ. Thank you. And now we're going to give you just a small glimpse of what they did this week.
it is now time for Noah's, well, before we get to Noah's Park, um, one more thank you to everyone uh, for uh, participating, helping, supporting in whatever way with uh, Vacation Bible School and also uh, with Amanda Stauffer, who uh, did such a great job. Amanda, why don't you stand up here, please? Did a great job leading. Let's give her and the whole team a round of applause. Thank you so much. And now it is time for Noah's Park Children's Church. from Ezekiel chapter 17 verses 22 through 24. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches, it will nest. Winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. Please read responsibly Psalms 92. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. To the most of the lute, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 to 21. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God, was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Please stand. for you God's people as it is written in the gospel according to St. Mark the fourth chapter the parable of the growing seed the mustard seed and the use of parables so Jesus also said the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow and he does not know how the earth produces of itself first the stock then the head then the full grain in the head when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It's like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up, becomes the greatest of all shrubs, 
and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Word of God, word of life. Please be seated. O grace be on you in peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you would turn to our our reading of 2 Corinthians that was on your bulletin insert, that's going to be our text for today. This is Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. Now Corinth, uh, in ancient Greece and in the ancient world, this was known as the Las Vegas, so to speak, of the ancient world. So what happens in Corinth stays in Corinth. Uh, Corinth was Sin City, so to speak, and there was a fledgling congregation there 2,000 years ago. Paul wrote, as we have of record at least, two letters to this congregation. And chapter 5 here is from that second letter. This congregation was going through a lot of strife, difficulty, challenges, uh, so much more than what we typically think a church goes through. But this church, if it had it, it had it. So then, let's look at our first verse. This is about the ministry of reconciliation. This is a tall order that Paul is giving to a conflicted congregation because he knows that they need to hear the challenge of God's Word. From now on, therefore, and when you see that word therefore, this is co-language for the Apostle Paul inspired by the Holy Spirit that something big is coming down the pike. Therefore, he says, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. We regard no one from a human point of view. Dietrich von Heffer, Lutheran pastor and martyr, who was hung by the Nazis at the end of the Second World War, wrote this tremendous work called The Cost of Discipleship. And what Bonhoeffer helped us to once again revisit and understand in the words of Jesus, that salvation, eternal life, is not just something after we die. And this is one of the great challenges for us as Christians. That we think that, well, once we are saved, once we become a follower of Jesus, that we have this ticket for heaven, and then that's it. That's all there is to it. And that is one of the great misunderstandings and misnomers and unfortunate things about our faith. Because it's not the end. It's just the beginning. We've had two Sundays in a row here of baptism. And one of the messages that has been shared with you from Martin Luther 500 years ago when he wrote, baptism takes just a moment to do, just a few minutes, but a lifetime to finish. It's the beginning of a journey of what it is to have Jesus as our role model and what it looks like to be living for him. And so when Paul is saying that we don't just look at a person from a human point of view, he's telling us that everyone is created in the image of God. Though it is marred and messed up by sin within each and every one of us, another word for one could say Selfishness, because when you look at the word sin, how is it spelled? S-I-N. And what's at the center of sin? The letter I. And who are our three favorite people? Oh, me, myself, and I. Well, of course. That's sin. And our lives are marred by that. And yet we also have this other part of us, which is a tremendous gift from God, that we are created in His image. Now this can be really challenging, and I'll be the first one to admit it, because sometimes I do great, and sometimes not so great. And that is to know and to look at each and every person who we encounter that they are created in the image of God. And you may think, well, what's the big deal about that? Think of the person that you really don't like at all. And I would say most, if not all of us, have at least one, two, or countless individuals in which when we think of them and their image comes to mind, it's not the most pleasant thing. 
And Paul's laying out the challenge for us here that in the midst of that, to see that other person that, guess what? Just like you, they are created in God's image. And the basis that Jesus is saying this is where he is in that same verse that we used to look at Christ as just human, but no longer. Meaning that Jesus is fully human. But what we have come to learn as well is that Jesus is also fully divine. The great miracle of Christmas. That Jesus is God in human flesh. Now this can be, perhaps for the world, one of the most ridiculous things they have ever heard. Or it can be, for people, one of the most absolutely mind-blowing, profound things they have ever heard. The claim that at Christmas we celebrate that God loves each and every one of us so much because we are created in the image of God. That he is here incarnate in the flesh in this we one, the babe of Bethlehem, the little bambino of Mary and Joseph who is fully man and also fully God. Wow. Let's continue and see what Paul further has to say. Verse 17 through 19. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled. And that word reconcile, reconciliation, five times appears in these short verses. Five times reconciled us to himself, not God to us, but us to God through Christ. And has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So not only has God reconciled us to himself through Christ, he then turns over this ministry to us so that we can bring others to the Lord through Christ. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. See, on the outskirts of town, there is this big old pecan tree by a cemetery fence. And one day, there were two boys. It was summer, and so they had time on their hands. So what do boys like to do? Well, they decided they would be walking around, and they saw this old pecan tree, and so they decided to go into the cemetery, and they sat themselves down where really no one could see them. They had a little bucket with them. They started filling that bucket up with all these pecan nuts. And they began dividing them. One for you, one for me. One for you, one for me. Now, as they were doing this, several of these nuts dropped on the ground and they rolled towards the cemetery fence. That's very important to remember. But then there was another boy coming along just riding on his bicycle. And as he passed, he thought he heard people, heard people talking in the cemetery that there were voices. thought this was rather strange. Couldn't see anybody there. But I thought I heard something, so he stopped. And he heard, one for you. One for me, one for you, one for me. He thought, this is the most peculiar sound, so he got closer to the cemetery fence and here. One for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. Oh my, he shuddered. He began to realize it's Satan and the Lord. They're dividing the souls at the cemetery. And he gets really, really scared. So he bolts off on his bicycle and he comes around this bend and he meets an old man with a cane who's just hobbling along trying to get by. And the boy's saying to him, come quick, you got to come with me. There's a really odd thing going on at the cemetery. Satan and the Lord are dividing up souls and they're going, one for you, one for me. This is an amazing thing. And the old man just saying, beat it, kid. Don't you realize I'm having a hard time walking here? I'm just hobbling along. But the boy kept begging him. Finally, the old fellow just uh, cave in. They show up at this spot on the cemetery fence and they heard the voices. One for you. One for me. One for you. One for me. And I said, boy, said the old man, you're telling the truth. Let's see if we can see the devil himself. So they were shaking with fear. They got closer to the fence. They were still unable to see anything, but they still heard the voices as they gripped the iron bars and were looking as close as they could, and they heard, one for you, one for me, and at last they heard, one for you, one for me, and one last one for you, 
that's all. Now, let's go get those nuts by the fence and we'll be done. <laughs> Legend has it to this day that the old guy made it back to town five minutes ahead of the boy. Again, salvation is more than just thinking of cemeteries. Although cemeteries do provide quite a gut check, do they not? It's a reality check. Because it makes us just stop and think. What am I doing with my life? Where's it been? Where is it now? Where do I hope it to be two, three, five, ten years down the road? What direction is it taking? In verse 17, right at the opening of verse 17, again, Paul uses this incredible language that if you understand just a little bit even beneath the surface, you know what's going on here. Because in verse 17, he opens that up with, so if anyone is in Christ, and if you want to circle that, go ahead. These two words are significant. In Christ. This is Paul's way of saying salvation over 150 times the Apostle Paul in his writings, which make up such a significant part of the New Testament. This is what he says in Christ. You can call it salvation. You can call it reconciliation. You can call it healing of a relationship with God, restoration, whatever words you want to use. But this is Paul's way of saying you are saved by God's grace through faith. You are reconciled through Christ to God. To be in Christ is one of the most beautiful, splendid, wonderful gifts that God could ever give His people. This is reconciliation. And you know, here's, here's the absolutely amazing thing. God loves you so much that He entrusts you and me with this ministry of reconciliation. For people to hear some good news in a time in which a world needs good news, to hear good news about the creator of this world who is so crazy about you that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will be reconciled, will be in Christ, will have everlasting life. Because God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world, you, would be in Christ through him. Wow. The ministry of reconciliation. And so we continue. So we are, verse 20, we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Now for some people, when it comes to having a relationship with Jesus, it's sort of an instantaneous thing. But the vast majority of folks it is a long, lifelong process journey in which we become a little bit more like him each and every day. And so as God entrusts you and I with this ministry of reconciliation, we become ambassadors. You are ambassadors of your family. And together we are ambassadors of God. Now this is one of the things that we learned at Vacation Bible School this week. Who is this God? See, in, in the book of Exodus, there's that really awesome story of Moses and the burning bush. And this is very early in the biblical narrative. And God, uh, Moses does not know who this God is. And so as God is speaking to Moses through the burning bush, Moses is saying, well, who is this that I am speaking to? Because God is asking him, go back to Egypt, liberate your people, 
You go across the Red Sea and then wander in the wilderness for 40 years, and then you'll enter the promised land. And so God is communicating this to Moses, and Moses is saying, I have the foggiest idea who you are. Who are you? And God says two words, I am. I am. Now you may remember Popeye saying, I am who I am, and then he does that laugh, yuck, 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 whatever. It's a little bit different here. Each of us has a nickname, or two, or three, or ten. Some of them we might actually like. Some of them from, from school, whether it was elementary, middle school, high school, some of them maybe we didn't like. But it's awesome when we have some nicknames that we really like to be known by. God has this incredible, cool nickname, I Am. It's like saying Alpha and Omega, A and Z, beginning to end, last and the first. There is no other. There's none greater than me, none higher than me, none broader, none deeper. There are other gods that exist that people can chase after. But if you want to know who the ultimate one is, in which there is no other, this is the one, the great I Am. And so in Bible school, and we saw a little bit of this on the uh, tape that we had, but the kids learned this week five, uh, we call them the attributes of God, five characteristics of God. Who is God? And, and so the kids learn this about God because for the kids who already have a relationship, a young, early relationship with the Lord, this has helped them take that next step. And for the kids who don't know yet who this God is, it was a way to help them begin to understand who this God is. And so what we did, we had Bible buddies along the way to help us with this. On Monday was Camera the Chameleon, changes color, but God never changes. You know, like Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, forever. And so we learned that God is great. Now, we could let you off the hook, but... You know, I thought Monica did a wonderful job there of not only having the kids sing, but also having you participate as well. All righty? So what we're going to do here, as you saw with the kids, you're going to say this with me. We're going to go Monday through Friday. All right? So it's, it's going to be where together we say God is great. Now, some of you are big fans of Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. You like Tony the Tiger? This will just come naturally for you. All right? All right, so let's say this together. God is great. All right? So God is great. Our God is a great God, an awesome God, an amazing God. Tuesday, our Bible buddy, and this for me was a tongue twister all week. Flip the flatjack octopus. And, yeah, the octopus lives at the bottom of the sea. God knows where she is and what she's doing. And we learned that God is almighty. So we said, God is almighty. Yay! All right? So don't act like Lutherans on this one. Act like Baptists, sir. <laughs> All right? You got to go, yeah! All right? Hey, if you can cheer on the Buckeyes, you can cheer on God, okay? So let's say this together, all right? God is almighty! Yeah! All right, that passes, kind of. Then on Wednesday, on Wednesday, we had Clark the Shark. And Clark the Shark, the sharks may be the kings of the sea, but God is king over all. And so we learn that God is ruler. Now, these kids probably don't know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is. But I think the grown-up version kids, you guys, do. And, and so we, we did this funny thing on, uh, where you, know, you flex your muscles, right? Okay, we all have muscles. Maybe some are more developed than others. I get to cheat on this one because you don't see my arms kind of doing this thing, all right, because of the robe. But God is ruler, and so we would say God is ruler, all right? Whether you think that sounds like Arnold or not, I don't know. But let's try it together where we say this. God is ruler. All right. And then Thursday, jam the immortal jellyfish. I would ask the kids, so how many of you have a peanut butter and jellyfish sandwich every morning? No one answered. I can't figure that out. And so we had jammed the immortal jellyfish. may seem to live forever in the ocean. We can live forever with God if we trust in Jesus. And so God is Emmanuel. In other words, God is with us, is what we did. 
So we would put our arms around each other. Now, if you're sitting next to a person that you don't feel comfortable doing that, I get it. If you're sitting next to a person that you feel comfortable doing that, please do so. Guys, if you got a special someone there next to you and it's been a while since you put your arm around her, this is a great opportunity in which to do that. Okay, now Chris and Amanda, I know your arms are full there with the kids, so just kind of do an air hug, all right? That's how that'll be. All right, so say it with me. God is together. God is with us. Excuse me. God is with us. All right, and then Friday we had Trusty the Macaw is a good friend. God is the most treasured friend ever. God is trustworthy. And so we did this, that God is trustworthy. God is worthy of our trust. And the way that we know that is that, again, because of the Jesus event, from Christmas to Easter, how Christ is born, Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. And because of that, to see that we are created in the image of God, and because of that, then how God entrusts us with this ministry of reconciliation, knowing that we do so with the God who is I am, the great I am. So let's say this together. God is trustworthy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in singing hymn 635, hymn 635, verses 1 and 5, as we see printed in your bulletins. We walk by faith. Please stand.
page 105 in the front portion of your hymnals. For the whole church, let us confess our ancient future faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Page 105, please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and for all of God's creation. Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God, Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace, You are the great I Am. You are the one who reconciles us to one another and to You. With Your forgiving hands of justice and mercy, shape us into new people that we might become the righteousness of God. Oh, what a great privilege Lord, it is to pray on behalf of Linda Sink and Bev Cordy, Jeff Donor, Pat Leland, Kenny Donor, for Alicia Hickerson, Jan Hoblet, Ted Adams, Pauline Weldy, Corey Kleppel, Gary Miller, Phil Sanfilippo, Reagan Ream, Alicia Carter, Marcia Weldy, Jeff Mallon, Troy Kearns, Hippie Wapplehorst, Ron Staley, Sally Blake, for Pastor Jackie Bashar in the church on Oakland Park, And we give you thanks, Lord, for a wonderful week of reaching kids for Christ with Vacation Bible School. As a community of faith, help us to do what you are blessing, Lord God, here in Van Wert County and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. From where you're standing, just please extend the peace of God to one another. God's peace with each and every one of you. God's peace. A reminder that our offering boxes are at both exits. Uh, For people who are watching online, you can go to our website, stmarchslutheranvw.com, or text 419-273-9947 as we continue the 157-year ministry of being the hands and feet of Jesus, locally, nationally, and globally. We're on page 112 in your hymnals. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May your week be meaningful in Christ as ambassadors of the great I Am. Therefore, blessed and beloved people of God and members of His forever family, God has shown you what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God? So for the week to come, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace and share the good news.
We join together in singing hymn 550, verses 1 and 3, verse 1 and 3, on what has now been sung. Parents and guardians, just a reminder that uh, your children are in the church basement. By the exits, there are stairwells that go down into the fellowship hall. Have a great week, everyone. Have a meaningful week as we serve the great...